I'm speaking of what I've entitled God the Performer. Our God is a performer. And he performs just to perfect. He performs just to honor his name. When I say a performer, a performer is not a reformer. A performer is an executor of intention. A performer is someone that makes expectation access a dimension of manifestation. A performer is like an impossibility specialist. A performer is a doer, not just a talker. A performer is the one who has all the resources available at his perusal to make sure what he promises comes to pass as he has already promised. Now, it will interest you to know that everybody on earth can perform something in life. But God is the one, only one who can perform everything in life. He can do all things and he can make all things begin to happen in our life. Every human being can do something, but God is the only one that can do everything. I've seen people with deep prophetic insight that doesn't do, they don't know how to preach. And I've seen people who know how to preach and they don't know how they've never even had a dream before. I've seen people who also preaches well and God have never used them to do the miraculous before. I've seen people, so different kinds of people, even in our calling, the reason why we have fivefold ministry is because even we, the men of God, we can do some things, but our God is the only one that can do everything. You are, you are missing it. He's the only one who can do everything. And that is why without him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do everything. So Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we leave the level of limited execution as a performer to unlimited execution as a performer when we discover that the one who can do everything is the one who is living inside of us. And so and so now we are operating not in our dimension, but we start operating in God's dimension. I don't know who I'm blessing already today. And I see some of you here about to operate in God's dimension. That your amen is not good. Can you shout it louder? You are about to operate in God's dimension. You are about to operate in God's dimension. And it is my prayer today in the name of Jesus. May the grace to do more. May the grace to do many things. May the grace to execute many counsels. May the grace to cause many things happen begin to fall upon your life and your destiny. If you believe it, give somebody a high five and say, my God is a performer. I can't hear you one more time. Say, my God is a performer. So he said, I will watch over my word. I will watch over my word. So what Ezekiel did was to speak the word. And the performer watched over his word to perform it. So until the word of God is spoken, the performer is restricted in execution. Because God can only perform and perfect that which has been spoken. Because God is his word. Why? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And nothing was made that was made without the word. In him was life. And the life became the light of man. So it is in God's calendar that anytime he wants to perform something, somebody must inform something. And the information must be inspired by scriptures. And so anytime you see, you speak scriptures, you bring the pictures of God's intention to view. I'm taking you somewhere. Give somebody half of and say, my God. Oh, come on, do it like you are crazy. Say, my God 
is a performer. No, do it like the way I'm doing it. Anyone around you just do it. Say, my God is a performer. Give that person a half of one more time. Say, my God is a performer. He's not just a talker. He is a doer. I say he is a doer. And look at someone and say, whatever he has promised you, he is able to perform. For he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can think and imagine according to the power that worketh inside of you. Give the Lord a shout of praise and shout, my God is a performer. I love your word. Now so God performs. God does what? Performs. But there are six vehicles that God uses to perform. And the first vehicle is a vehicle of revelation. Because revelation, I've told you before, is higher than information. Because information is available based on association, contact, and education or scholastic attainment. But revelation is attained by isolation. Revelation is attained by isolation. Because anytime God wants to reveal something great unto a man, he isolates that particular individual and then he downloads that which he wants that individual to offload. You're missing it. Are you catching it now? And so, so, so when we talk about revelation, you have to be able to separate yourself before sometimes God reveal things to you. So the crowd can hinder you from seeing the cloud. The seen can hinder you from seeing the unseen. And so emotions does not come in when revelation is supposed to be in view. Intentionality to isolate yourself is what gives you the platform to be able to access what God has for you. So the first vehicle is a vehicle of what? Of what? Revela revelation. I couldn't hear you say it louder. I can't hear you say it louder. Do you know that what you know that others don't know is what can make you known than they become known? Because everyone rich in our generation did not become rich because of prayer. They became rich because of revelation. <laughs> now, why? Because revelation gives you access to what you are supposed to do that was hidden. So when we say it was revealed, it means I never knew God wanted me to be this. But now God is saying I should be this. Now that God has showed me I should be this, it gives me the confidence to be able to move. So revelation builds confidence for you to be able to access the blessing of the performer. I thought you were catching it. Are you catching it now? Give somebody have and say, my God... Is a performer. I don't know what is on your heart this morning, but God is about to perform. But he will perform, first of all, in the vehicle of what? Revelation. The one day Jesus was walking with the disciples and he asked them, who do men say that I am? And some, the, one of them said, some say you are Elias. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are this. Some say you are that. And he said, really, who do you say that I am? And then he said to them, Peter lifted up his hand and said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Immediately Jesus looked at him and said, blessed are thou now, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, but my father who is in heaven, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against you. Now, this suggests to me that, this suggests to me that revelation is what brought Peter elevation and made God choose him as a master performer in the New Testament church. That in Acts chapter number 1, 2 and 3, you could literally see how God used Peter to be able to preach and 3,500 souls were won. If a preacher preaches and five, 3,500 souls are won instantaneously, he's not just a good preacher. He is a master revelation carrier. 
You are not catching it. Are you catching it now? <laughs> so the first vehicle is a vehicle of what? Revelation. The second vehicle is the vehicle of realization. Because when you get revelation, it brings you to a place of realization. You come to now realize that now that God opened my eyes, I am seeing a dry bone. I am seeing this is a situation. I am seeing what is really going on. Now, revelation brings realization. Now, most of us have not come to a place of realization. Now, God is saying that until you realize, that it means if you don't realize, it means you have not identified. If you have not identified Identified means you cannot rectify. So you must come to a level of realization. This is where I am. This is what I'm going through. And I'm believing God that he will step into my case to change the paradigm of my life. I want to pray for somebody here in the name of Jesus that as you are living here this morning, may God bring you to a place of realization that you are not broke. You are just waiting to be a millionaire that you are not jobless god is preparing something bigger for you that you are not depressed god is building you to be able to have intimacy with him it's a realization it's a realization that you are not single your master husband your master wife is being prepared for you how i wish i will hear you shout amen three times and shout again realization is very powerful because until you come to a level of realization that you need God you might think that everything you have is because of you I had a call very early in the morning a man of God in Europe just passed away today he had prepared this message he has done everything the wife was waking him up and he did not wake up he is gone every wealth God has ever blessed him with he has just left it and has gone to be with the Lord now sitting here today you must realize that your life is the greatest gift God can ever give to you it's a realization it's a realization he can't talk anymore he cannot kiss the wife anymore you are not hearing it I say you are not hearing it if there is a vacation that vacation has ended abruptly so anything that takes the place of God in your life must be something you must fight with everything inside of you and create a room for God in your life why because the giver of life is the seeker of your time clap your hands if you can Realization is very important. Realization is very, very important. And I've seen many people who don't realize that God has been good to them. I've seen many people who don't realize that even though being alive to see a dry bone is more important than dying to become a dry bone. You miss it. Being alive to see a dry bone is more important than you dying to become a dry bone. I declare today, may God give you a realization. Amen. I can hear you. May God give you a realization. Amen. But so when you realize who God is in your life, what he has done in your life, what he has made you to be, you build intimacy without being forced. Coerce. You build intimacy because you know that you are who you are because of God. You will be what you will be because of God. You are alive because of God. You will live because of God. If you decide that you will die today, you will die today. If you decide that you live today, you live today. I thank God when we woke up, I realized your name was on the living register. Give the Lord a shout, a clap, praise, yeah. and glory in the house. realization I love your word and so he entered into the bones and realized and realized sometimes we complain so much as if God has done nothing but when you look into your life properly you will see God has done a lot he has not finished everything 
but he has finished something. You miss it. You miss it. And it's not that he cannot do it, but the beauty of life is when your blessing comes one day at a time. And the reason is because if all that we're looking for comes to you one day, there will not be anything to expect. There will not be anything to bring you to a level of suspense. There will not be anything to exclaim for. There will not be anything to desire for. There will not be anything to pray for. There will not be anything to sought after. There will not be anything to look out for. So everything does not just come once. Most times, God releases them one day. Come on, preach with the preacher. One day at a time. So today, by the grace of God, you have a job. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, you will propose to that girl and he said, baby, I will marry you. The, the, the following day, you are renting your own home. And by the time you realize you have bought a land, by the time you realize you have built a house, I'm just prophesying to somebody right on speaking. Professor! And by the time you realize you are having three kids, and you, you, you look at yourself and say, Charlie, Chale, is it not me? Chale, it's the same person. Yeah. How did this happen? Yes. How did this happen? Yes. I pray for you today. For Whatever me, you are looking for, yes, Lord. God is delivering it to you. Amen. God is delivering it to you. Amen. Lift up your voice. Shout amen three times. Amen. Shout again. Amen. Shout again. Amen. My God, I don't know whether I'm preaching or I'm teaching. You are preaching. Am I preaching or I'm teaching? Is something entering into your spirit. Yes, the third thing is what I call the vehicle of return. Because then we look into it in a very deeper dimension to realize that we have come into from a place of revelation to a place of what? Realization. And then when there was realization, the end product of the realization is that the particular state would tend to be to get to his original state. It was not a dry bone before. It had flesh. It had sinews. It had breath. It had energy. It had a sense of mobility. But now, it is not only that it doesn't have mobility, the bones are also scattered. So whilst Ezekiel was inside for supervision and observation, Ezekiel then realized that this thing must go back to its original state. I tell you this today, God is taking you back to his original plan. Amen. If you shouted, Amen, God is taking you back to the original plan. Amen. I feel like preaching today. Yes. You were designed a millionaire. You will not die a pauper. Amen. You were designed blessed. Yes. You will never die cursed. Amen. You were designed lifted. You will not be left out. Amen. Give the Lord a shout and say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Today. Today. I declare. I declare. By your power. By your power. And by your grace. And by your grace. Bring me back. Bring me back. To my place. To my place. Of destiny. Of destiny. Shout amen like thunder. Amen. A place of return. So the observation and the supervision was to be able to look at the valley, see the bones, and figure out what could be done. Return. Now, can I tell you something here? Do you know that anyone that falls in life, when you are very strategic in your falling, you will rise forward? Because the lessons that made you fall will be learned. So you rise with the lessons learned. And then God then, in your falling, prepares you into your place of destiny. Who am I communicating with today? Hey, sometimes it's better to fall early. So you learn early. Rise early. And continue very fast. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Because the just shall, the just shall fall seven times. Now, many of you don't understand that scripture. It means everybody just, justified by God will fall in your journey with God. You will fall. But there is a place of your rising. You miss what I'm just saying. There is a place of your return. There is a place of your return. And you have to make up your mind to return. You have to make up your mind to return. Because if you don't return, you will remain like a dry bone in the valley. I pray for your return. 
Jesus. The return of your love for God. Yes, Lord. The return of your fellowship with God. Amen. The return, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Of the love for people. Ah. The return of your prayer life. Ah. The return of your service to God. Yes, Lord. Receive the grace ah. to return. Amen. My God is a performer. Return. Return. I was going through the book of Revelation and I saw something like say, go back to your first love. And I'm like, wow. So it means I loved him better than this. Now, by the time you look back, you realize that your love for God is declining and suffering from a scientific cause called entropy. And with time, everything about your life is declining, depleting. And your love is just going down because your fellowship is broken. And when your fellowship is broken, your love breaks. You can ask anybody whose wife is in America or her husband is in America. I know a lady in Ghana whose husband has been in America for 15 years. And they only talk on phone. They do everything on phone. 15 years. And by the time the man came back, the woman did not know the man had married in America. Why? The breaking of fellowship gradually make you backslide until you realize that no, phone talk with my husband does not give me proximity to, to kiss him, to, to love him, to cook for him, to be there for him, to things for him, for me to wear my beautiful dress, for my husband to see and say, baby, whatever you are forgiving you, let us not talk about all the bad things you did. Tonight we need to talk. It's a lie. It's because of what he has seen. He's very excited. Now every little thing you say, the man become very angry because distance has a way of destroying the beautiful story of love. And may I announce to you today, if you are in this church, it is my prayer as you say amen loud is that you will return back to God amen I don't like you amen you will return back to God amen you will return back to God amen and you say God I give my heart back to you I give my life back to you I give my love back to you I give my attention back to you your blessing will not steal my attention. Ooh, I feel like I'm preaching. Lord, I, I want you to bless me. And so I saw a woman who said, God has blessed me with a baby. And because of that baby, I can't be in church. How can you be looking for a baby? And God gives you a baby. And because of that baby, you cannot... How can you look for a job and God gave you a job and because of that job you cannot how can God give you a visa and he gave you a visa you went to America and you cannot you are not talking to me you got to talk to me how can God give you breath and uh, you woke up and you cannot you can dress to go to work but you can't dress to go and if you can give excuses for God and create a room for money, it shows where your heart is. When Steve Jobs died, he was a billionaire. He was a billionaire. <laughs> I love your way. A billionaire, but he died. And I realized that it doesn't matter how rich. In fact, do you know the story I heard from a right-hand man of that man? I was in Dostrom, Mpumulanga, in South Africa. And one of the richest billionaires on earth was there and we were having a conversation. And he was telling me the conversation he had with Steve Jobs. And he told him, he told him emphatically, he said, there is nothing I have not done. There is no doctor I have not seen, but I see myself dying. And you... You don't have money like Steve Jobs. None of us here. If we put all our assets on earth together, it cannot be compared to Michael Jackson who died years ago and Steve Jobs who died years ago. But if God had been merciful to you and you are alive today and then you begin to give excuses, hey, I pray that the grace of God will help you to return back to God. Say, oh Lord, 
I return back to you. Can I hear you shout amen like fire? I return back to you. <laughs> I love your word. I return back to you. So the first thing is what? Revelation. The first vehicle is what? Revelation. The second vehicle is what? Realize that the third vehicle is what? I don't like the way this word. The fourth vehicle is reflection. Now, when you return, then you come to a place of reflection. Because you can't have attention and you cannot have a certain dimension of, of growth in life until you now compare your life with God and when you were on your own. There must be a place of what? Reflection. Have you ever been depressed before? Downhearted before? Downcasted before? And you entered into church and just the song ministration lifted up your spirit as if you were not carrying any burden before? There must be a place of what? Come on, talk to me. A place of what? If God will ever, if God, listen, I feel like preaching. If God will ever take you higher, you must reflect. You know, there is a song that is saying, Men so many wine. A at the end of me fear. Now we're ready, now go on. Baby, I would give me a bit to ye. Someone now was here, and you, a mama, in a mama. If it's only an the songwriter was saying, Who am I? And where do I come from? What is even the name of my father? What is the name of my mother? Do you know that I realized my father's name was Ochem when I was 25 years? So look at me. Look at me. I came to know my father's surname was Ochem when I was 25 years and everybody has called me Nkum for 25 years so I became Nkumlized you miss it and the, and the richest person in the family they named me after was a Pamwai Tapa now somebody asked me a question Apostle Nkum, why are you passionate about God why do you love God it's a place of reflection when I look back, when I was selling toffee at the train station, when I look back, when I was selling uh, corn with my mother on the, at the train station side, when I look back and look at my kayas, kayas I was wearing to go to school, and my torn cloth going to school, the place of reflection increases my level of attention and intimacy with God because I realize that if God have not done anything at all, as I look at myself, I realize he has been a good God. Give the Lord a clap and a shout and praise in this house. Maka paradasaya. Baby, I won't name it. Beduru ye. Manawasia. And yo. Ha! Imalatose. Yay! Kalatasa. If it's on the energy, on the energy, on the energy, lift up your voice now. Too full on the energy. Let me talk to you about reflection. And you come to a level when you realize you are very sick, almost at the point of death, but you are still alive. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. You saw yourself depressed and even thought suicidal, but God in his own infinite mercy came in and helped you. There was a time money for your fuel, money for torture was even a problem. Money to even eat was a problem. But today, you took your own car, paid for it, and got to church. Sometimes certain small things you take for granted are things 
things that others are praying for. There must be a place of reflection. There must be a place of reflection. There must be a place of reflection. You might not have everything, but you have something. But the one who lives in you can do everything. And so I pray for you today that may God bring your mind into a place where he picked you from, where you are, and trust him that he will take you to where he has promised he will take you to. You are not hearing me. Are you really hearing me at all? It is my prayer this morning in the name of Jesus yes, that Lord. you will you will you will just go back. Tell somebody go back, go back, go back. Think backward, think backward. Think backward. Just look at the things that you have been through. Just 2023, just 2022, just 2020, just two. two now are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, just look back and look at where you are. Do you think you are the one who lifted yourself, kept yourself, prayed for yourself, believed for yourself, just slept and woke up? It is the doing of the Lord, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Give the Lord a clap and a shout of praise in this house yeah. my god is a performer yeah. my god yes. is a performer yes. my god yes. is a performer a place of reflection if you don't go back you can't go forward yeah, yeah, yeah. So look at cars that normally park in where other people park. Anytime they park, if they're parking this way, everybody parks this way. But when you want to go forward, you have to go backward. Then you can move forward. In life, if you don't think, listen to me, oh, if you don't think about what God has done for you before, you might think because of what you are looking for God has done nothing but sweetheart God has done a lot I'm telling you God has done a lot a lot you were almost homeless some time ago <laughs> you miss it you miss it you were struggling to pay your children's school fees some time ago. Maybe still you are still struggling, but at least you have a child that you are struggling to pay his school fees because somebody is praying for a child to pay the child's school fees but does not even have that child. Hey! I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May God bring you to a place of reflection. Oh, Papa, you don't know what you are talking about. It's only one child I have. Somebody don't even have a womb. Somebody have never even had one before. I'm telling you this today. Until you begin to develop a sense of reflection, you will lose the relevance of God's goodness in your life. Wananawaye. <laughs> Yam ye 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 I'm almost done. How many of you are already blessed? If I even stop, you know you are blessed. It's a place of reflection. Most times I sit in my room and my door is locked and people out like Patrick and Ima, they will be doing meeting behind me that what is wrong, Papa? Is he okay? Do we knock at this door? Why is he inside for long? Because sometimes you need to be quiet somewhere and begin to reflect. Have you heard about it before? Count your blessing and name them one by one and you will know what the Lord has done. Because sometimes if you don't count certain things, you will not know. Don't trivialize breath. The breath you breathe. 
Don't trivialize your nose. Don't trivialize your hearing. The fact that you can wake up and hear, don't trivialize it. I'm telling you, don't trivialize mobility. The grace to wake up yourself and dress yourself and choose what you want to wear and wear it. Don't trivialize it. Don't trivialize it. You can only place so much value on it when you go to hospital and see certain people who are so much rich. They've gotten a whole world for them with securities, but their hands are hanged in the air. Reflection will bring you to a place of appreciation. Place of research. No, that is what I'm saying. I'm saying, are you catching it now? You know the work I'm doing is not going well. And I'm telling you, somebody is even looking for money to start. The one you are doing that is not going well. Papa, my salary is small. It is true. God is going to give you a better job for a better salary. But can you be grateful at least that you have this one? Sometimes the materialistic kind of preachings bring our heart into a level of insatiable quests for many things that are not even connected to our destiny, but will make people to know God has blessed us. You know the blessings of God? The blessings of God is the God inside of you. Anytime you see somebody carrying Christ, the person is blessed. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, look, <laughs> I've been picked by a private jet before to go and pray for a multi-billionaire who could not sleep for an entire seven days. Not demonic attack, not financial attack. Insomnia without explanation. Cannot sleep. I laid my hands on him. He fell. He couldn't wake up. I thought he was dead. The powers that took away his sleep left him. He slept her. He even forgot to give my offering. He slept her. Are you in church? <laughs> don't you like me? If you don't like me, I still like you. Uh -huh. Because you cannot pick me with a private jet. And then after, you won't give me offering. There is no parking space in the air. So if I die, what do you think? Yeah. He slept. He slept for almost, listen to me carefully, I have never stood on this altar to lie to you before. That's one of the things I want you to know. Now, let me tell you, he slept for almost 24 hours plus because there was an accumulation. He was jittering, jittering. He couldn't, it was he was looking like somebody who was suffering from multiple sclerosis. He was, I, I could not even know where to lay my hands because the man was in his just bedroom. If I tell you the places we park, pass before we went to the bedroom. You know some people, even in their house, I'm telling you. Are you listening to me? And he slept. From that day, he started sleeping. Why? He giveth his beloved sleep. Sweetheart, can I ask you a question? Did you sleep last night? Were you able to close your eyes? Your sleeping last night is a sign that you are blessed by God. Don't trivialize it. Don't trivialize it. Don't trivialize it. So the third one is what? I've given the first one is revelation. The second one is what? I can't hear you realization. The third one is what? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And then the fourth one, reflection. Are you sure it's reflection? Yeah. Okay, then the fifth one is a revival. Now, anytime God wants to bring us into a place, are you in church? Anytime God wants to bring you into a place, of performing, he has to revive. 
He has to revive. Revival means to bring back. What does revival mean? I can't hear you. What does revival mean? Yeah, yeah, I sense the Holy Ghost all over. May God help me not to enter into some realm. I said revival means to do what? Today God sent me to tell you he is bringing something back into your life. Oh my God, as you shouted amen, your prayer life is coming back. Hey, ah! Your worship life is coming back. Hey, ah! Your love for God is coming back. Hey, ah! If you shout amen, may God revive you. Hey, ah! May God revive you. Hey, ah! Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, revive me. Revive me. So revival is not reinvention. No, revival is reactivation. Revival is not reinvention. It's reactivation. It's the same thing that has become dormant that God activates. It's revival. It's revival. So if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, is already inside of you, the same spirit shall revitalize your mortal body. So revival is divine revitalization system. So it is like a booster. It is like a vitamin that is added to your normal nutrients to give you leverage. Revival. Can I talk to you a little bit here? So you see, when you heard the shaking in the valley, it was revival. You miss it. It was what? Have you been discouraged before and then you look back? You see, that's why revival cannot come without reflection. Because when you look back and then, then some energy enters to you. Say, Tale, no, 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 he will take me there. I can't be discouraged. I can't be down. I can't be, I can't be this. I got to get up. I got to move. It brings you to a place of revival. I pray in the name of Jesus. May God revive you. Amen. I don't like you. Amen. May God revive you. Amen. Receive revival in your heart. I receive. Oh, Papa, before, the way I could pray for about one hour a day. Now, when you even wake up, you don't even touch your phone. You don't even talk to God. You touch your phone and you go to WhatsApp. You go to TikTok. You have watched funny videos until your life has started becoming funny. Yeah. It's not bad. We are in a very depressive generation. However, the only thing that brings pleasure is God. How do I know? The Bible said, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are treasure forevermore. Can I talk to you a little bit here? May God give you pleasure. May God give you pleasure. You see, may the things of God be pleasurable to you. Amen. May prayer be pleasurable to you. Amen. You did not hear me. I said, may prayer be pleasurable to you. Amen. May coming to church be pleasurable to you. Amen. Let people not call you. Let people not tell you that. You know, today, and the Lord told me something. He said, tell my people that next Sunday, they should bring two papers to church. And I said, for what? He said, they should write their kingdom mandate. Their kingdom mandate and their personal mandate. I said, what does this mean? He said, the kingdom mandate is their own plan for the things of God. How many souls you want to win? The system you want to use to win the souls and how you want to bring those souls to God and how you want to be the one God will use to assimilate and make the souls come to know him. He said, tell my people, if they want to see my glory, they should write their kingdom mandate. So the first one is your kingdom mandate because if somebody can pay for somebody to go for vacation, it is good. But it is not as good as somebody paying for somebody to be in the house of God. Because people go to vacation and still get pregnant. Have you ever seen that 20, uh, 14th of February is coming? What is 20, 14th of February? Valentine. Uh -huh. That day is supposed to be a love day. Genuine love of God day. It has been turned to sex day. And many people get pregnant that time. And most of them that get pregnant at that time.
Are you really in church at all? Um, am I boring you? I'm still preaching. You need to focus. And he said, tell them that they should write all the things they want me to do for them. And they should write all the things they want to do for me. Your personal mandate is what you want God to do for you. And God's kingdom mandate is what you want to do for God. And he said they should present the two to me. As they are doing what gladdens my heart, I will do what will gladden their heart. I wish you would shout amen because this is... I was so excited. I was so excited, but very sad. So if people came to church earlier today, you will see that I was not dancing. Even during the worship, I was very quiet. Because I don't know why God told me that he is about to lift people at the radiant place that every eyes will see. And he said to me, tell them, tell them. You heard Prophet Bernard came and said that one person here very soon will pay a tithe of how much? 100,000 US dollars. If there is no prophet I believe in, I believe in my son. And when they said that, he said that, I said, God, how can it happen? So when the Lord spoke to me this morning and said, tell everybody to write two mandates for next week Sunday. The first mandate is their personal mandate. And the second mandate is their kingdom word mandate. And he said, as they present it to me and they move at the side of the bargain, they will just see me entering into their life and begin to make things happen in their life. Can I hear you say amen to Jesus? Revival is coming. And I declare you are the revivalist. You miss it. I think I got to find somebody to. I say you are the revivalist. Hey, man. I say revival is coming. Hey, man. And you are the revivalist. Hey, man. I couldn't hear you say revival is coming. Revival. And you are the revivalist. All your friends that don't know God will know God because of you. Hey, man. All your family that don't know God will know God because of you. Hey, man. I tell you, this year is your year of making God known to everybody. Hear me. It doesn't matter where your friends are. Because of you, they will know God. Because of you, they will not go to hell. Because of you, they will not die before their time. Because of you, they will succeed. Because of you, they will move forward. Because of you, good things will come their way. Before, when you see people, you want to talk to them about Jesus. Today, when you want to see people, it's difficult for you to do it. May God grant you the grace. Amen. Lastly, I think I'm about to go to the sixth one, right? It is what they call the vehicle of restoration. The vehicle of what? Now, when we talk about restore, it means something was stored. Before you were born, everything you needed was already stored. How do you know that, Pastor Lincoln? Before Adam was created, huh? I saw the rivers were already there. The mango tree had already become ripe. The, all the fruits, uh, alasa, myself and my children is our best fruit right now. We eat alasa almost every day. Because of its uh, rich, how do we call it, uh, vitamin C, you know, this thing. Huh? So we eat it. It's like a competition. Even last night, we went to buy 20, but we were able to, by the grace of God, finish 12. And the 8 is waiting after service. Evening service. What do you think? Yeah. All those things were already available. Watch what I'm about to tell you. So all of them were before, before Adam was born. So everything you needed in your life to succeed was available before you were born. So it is taught. It was taught before you were born. It was taught before you were born. So Apostle Lincoln, what is it that, why have I not received it? Because God has to go into the store 
are you listening to me? To go and move what is in the store and bring it to you. That is one area of restoration. The second area of restoration is something God himself has given to you, but you have lost it. And then he wants to now bring it back to you so that it will be better than it used to be. Who am I communicating with here? I see God restoring. Do you know that the Bible said that when Ezekiel prophesied and everything by the agent of prophetic word, everything started coming together, bone to bone and everything, they stood up as a mighty army. Let me tell you, you are not the only one who is experiencing a dry bone. Where you are living, somebody is also there. Because inside the grave, there were other human beings that their, their flesh was also gone. But I tell you this today, the revival of one made others experience a revival. I say in the name of Jesus, the Lord is about to revive you and restore you. And your revival and your restoration will affect many people in the name of our Lord Jesus. Clap your hands, scream, and give God some praise. Yeah. God is reviving you. And God is doing what? Restoring you. And God is doing what? Restoring you. It is my prayer today. I told you it's apostolic. And that's how apostolic ministry works. Are you listening to me? I pray for you that by the end of this ministry, yes, Lord. by the end of this preaching, which I'm done, yes, Lord. everything you have lost, Jesus. God is restoring you. Hey, man. And can you shout like you are crazy like me? Say, there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. I want to hear you shouting louder. There shall be no loss. In your life, in your finances, in your business, in your marriage, in your connection, in your association, in your no contract, loss. there shall be no loss. What's the slogan today? There shall be no loss. Shout it louder again. There shall be no again there shall be no loss you will lose nothing again I said you will lose nothing again there shall be no loss there shall be no loss tonight is anointing service 12 days seems like 2 days to me some of you did not fast but may God forgive you some of you fasted and you broke by 9 a.m. May God forgive you. The way I saw Enoch shouting amen, it's like, ah, Papa, you knew one of the days I broke by <laughs> And six to six people, may God bless you. Six to three, may God bless you too. Six to twelve, may God bless you too. And six to nine, you too. May God bless you too. Are you listening to me? Oh God, there shall be no loss. Can I shock you today? This year you will not lose money. This year you will not lose contract. This year you will not lose favor. The people that rejected you suddenly will be looking for you. That your amen is louder. I see them looking for you. Amen. We are not going to pray oh, that. Pray, 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 pray. You know we are praying a lot, right? Yes. I came to declare this morning. And tonight, I'm going to anoint everybody. Ah. And everybody should come with your bottle of oil. It's your 2024 oil. We are praying over it. Yes, and asking God for the release of uncommon favor. Yes, and tonight, I am speaking on... Ezekiel 37. I'm finishing it tonight. I don't even know what I'm going to say, but I pray the Lord will give me a word. Can I pray for you tonight? Today? Yes, sir. You will not lose anything. Hey, man. You see that lady you love so much you want to marry? She will say yes to you. Hey, man. And you see that nice man you like? He will propose. Hey, man. You see, there are certain things 
I was having a conversation with one of my daughters and she said, that, Papa, I had some rashes all over my body. And I didn't know. And I think it's an allergy. And the rashes were coming. I was very scared. And then she said that when we were going, I saw your suit was there. And then I, I put my hand in your suit and I said, God, I don't want this thing to come around my body. Since I've touched Papa's suit, let this thing not come again. It has never come back again. This is not, look, there are certain things you might think it is minute, but when you talk to God, he will handle it. So don't tell me that, oh, is this my new thing that Papa is talking about? That maybe somebody is going to give somebody a million dollars. Is it what Papa is talking about? Is it my new to you? If I, if I get that money right now, God knows what I will do for him. I might not even touch one Ghana or one dollar. I will give all. Why? It is when I build his kingdom, the king builds my life. The king builds my favor system. Yesterday, I was with my son, Bernard, and one young lady stood up and gave a million Ghana city. One million Ghana city. God is raising such people in this ministry. You won't say amen. I say God is raising such people in this ministry. When you looked at the woman, the lady, did you believe it? Yeah, but she can give that money. And one young, one guy went there and I said, hey, I think you did not hear the money well. It's not 100,000. No. It is. It's not 100. It's not the 100 cities. And I said, did you hear well? He said, no, sir. I said, what? Me, I'm not a preacher, but I saw that this guy is going to find himself in trouble. They are going to call him and they ask him that, hey, where is the money you promised God? And he will say, how much did you say? I have the 100 Ghana. And the man is talking about 1 million Ghana CD because of the project that is ahead of them. Are you listening to me? If one Muslim can wake up to build thousands of mosques to glorify their Allah, may God bless us to build things to glorify our God. Amen. You won't shout amen louder here. Amen. Say there shall be no loss. Be no Say restoration on every side. Restoration on every Family side. restoration. Family Financial restoration. restoration. Academic, restoration. Academic restoration. I can't hear you. Favor restoration. Favor restoration. On, every on, every on every side. On every side. On every side. On every side. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. I, receive your restoration. I receive your restoration. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hand above the heavens and say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Restore me. Restore me. For every eyes to see. For every eyes to see. Amen. Stand on your feet. How many of you are blessed today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did I preach about? God, the performer, he performs. But he performs through a system. And the system is the six systems I gave you. Revelation, realization, return, Reflection, ah, uh, revival, and restoration. Shout amen. So God is going to do it. God is going to perform it. God is. I want you to pray only one prayer. Lord, perform. That is a prayer. See, wherever you are, there is somewhere bigger for you to occupy. And the day arrival mentality enters into your head. That is the beginning of your decline in life. Are you listening to me? You rescind. That word, how do they mention it? R-E-S-C-I-N-D. Rescind. 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 What kind of word is this? Rescind. Is it going down? Something like or a downturn? We'll talk about that one later. I want us to pray that Lord perform. Lord, do what? I can't hear. Lord, do what? I can't hear you. Lord, do what? Lord, perform. It is it's to do what?
Was doing what? Okay, Nana, you want to give the explanation? Give me. Papa, when you rescind, you go back on something. So when you take a decision and you rescind on the decision, you're just going back on the so decision. So it's a change of mind. Yes, Papa. Is it like relinquishing something? Not relinquishing, really. It's like repeal. It's like repeal. Repeal. Yes. Oh, revoke, cancel, or repeal. So it's a legal word, right? It's a legal word. Can you pray one prayer today? We are doing an appeal. We are doing what? An appeal. To tell God that God, anything that has not been performed in our lives, yes, watch over your word to perform. Yes, Lord. Some of you have received a word through declaration. I said something. You knew this was you. Yes, Even this morning, you knew this was you. Yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, you say, oh God of heaven, oh God of perform, heaven. And perform, perform and perfect. Perform and perfect. Open your perfect. mouth and pray and say, Lord, perform. Lord, perform. Lord, perform. I can't hear you. Say, Lord, perform. Lord, perform. Perform your intentions. Amen. Perform your counsel yes, concerning my life, concerning my destiny, concerning my future. Lord, perform. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please stretch and let me pray with you so that we can go now. Because of evening service. Are you are you are you glad you are blessed today? Yes, sir. I want us to pray and I want you to shout amen louder. I pray that God will perform everything he has promised you. Amen. That God will perfect everything that concerns you. Amen. Every agenda of the enemy yes. against your life this week, yes, they are hereby aborted and destroyed. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. I declare by divine authority yes, Lord. anything that has battled your life, Jesus. as you shout amen, that thing has come to an end. Amen. That thing has come to an end. Amen. That thing has come to an end. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak over your life. Yes, Lord. The grace. Jesus. The oil. The oil. The anointing. The anointing. To perform yes, Lord. comes upon you today. Amen. The anointing to be great come upon you today. Amen. The anointing to exceed yes, Lord. and to excel yes, Lord. come upon you today. Amen. Receive the grace. I receive. Receive the power. I receive. Receive the oil. I receive. I thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Anyone sick here is healed. Amen. Whatever somebody said you will not have. My God is delivering it to you. Amen. By the covenant of redemption. Yes, Lord. By the covenant of performance. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. The Lord is opening doors for your life. Amen. The Lord is opening doors for your life. Amen. Whatever that has been done against you. Yes, Lord. I declare them undone. Amen. Whatever that has been done for you. Jesus. I declare them released. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed in your going out. Amen. Your week is going to be like a shining light. Amen. Your week is going to be a blessed week. Amen. It's going to be an anointed week. Amen. It's going to be a financial week. Amen. It's going to be a God week. Amen. It's going to be a peaceful week. Amen. It's going to be a week of understanding. Amen. It's going to be your week of winning the soul. Amen. It's going to be your week of touching lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. And everybody will shout a louder amen. Amen.